In this lesson we are going to focus on the worksheet and in particular on the cells within that sheet. I want to be able to pass on to you just how the worksheet works and how you can modify the cells on that sheet. The sheet is broken down into columns referenced by letter A, B, C, D all the way across and then it also has rows which are referenced by numbers. Now a little bit of trivia here every cell has a reference so if we click into this cell here you notice it's in column G and it's in row 13. So it's G13 here in the name box as I hover over that you should see name box appear here in the name box it tells us the reference. Every cell has a reference on the sheet and that's what makes Microsoft Excel so powerful. But just think of this for a moment. Of the columns there are 16,384 columns. Rows there are 1,048,576 rows. Multiply them together and it tells us the number of cells, which is 17,179,869,184. That's a lot of cells and each of those has a reference. This is quite a large number. You can have literally a hundred worksheets if you wanted in a workbook. Of course, um, the size of it would be a bit difficult to maintain. So what's the point of this? Well, the worksheet is massive in what it can contain. If you were to take that 17 billion and convert it into the, and put just the letter 1 into a cell and then one second later put 1 into another cell, it's going to take you, I've divided it into minutes here, then into hours, then into days, and then into years. It would take you 544 years non-stop, day and night, seven days a week, to put one per second into every cell on just one worksheet. Okay, well how, maybe we don't understand the size of that. Let's take it to another extent. Let's say for instance that we make um, a piece of paper 60 cells or 60 rows deep and 20 columns wide. That breaks down to around about, and I know from printing that it's about 100 sheets of 80 GSM paper, um, 100 sheets to a centimetre. So that means that basically if we were to print this worksheet in its entirety, fill it and print it, the stack of paper would be 1,431 metres high. Now that is, the reason I mention all of that trivia is to help you to comprehend the scope of what Microsoft Excel can do. It is a huge resource and can do marvelous things. With that background, let's get into having a look at what the cells contain. Cells are containers that, first of all, they contain text and numbers. So you can put letters, numbers and dates, and a date is a number, into a cell. You can also then format the attributes of a cell. So that changes the way the text and numbers are displayed. You can give attributes to that cell. You can have a date with just the year and the month. Or you can have it with the, the day, year, month and second, hour and second. So we can provide attributes to change the way that things are formatted in a cell. We can add comments, comments to a cell, as we have here to show you. And of course, the real power of Microsoft Excel is that we can add formulas to a cell. And I've put some very basic formulas in cells over here to calculate all of those references that I mentioned earlier. A piece of trivia about a worksheet. All right, they're the things, the four things that can go into a cell. We've seen already how cells are referenced. You can reference a cell, but I want to show you something here that when you click into a cell, and here we're clicking into a cell with text in it, this is called the formula bar, 
whatever is in the formula bar is referencing that cell. So I can change in here, if I take out the word content in the formula bar, click outside, I've now also removed that from the cell. So when we click in the cell, it then references the formula bar and the location is referenced here in the name box. That's the basics of the cell structure. All right, how do we insert content into a cell? Well, there's a number of ways to do that. You can simply click in a cell and the cell becomes active. Even if you move your cursor away, you can click with your left mouse key, but when you take your finger off it, it still stays active. You can then type into here whatever you want, whether it be text or a number. That's basically how we can add text to that container. Another way is to copy. So if I was to go in and I uh, put something in here and I want to copy that, we could go up here to the copy button and go copy. Come back down to another cell and go back to the top and go paste. And that information is pasted in there. We could also right click and copy and then select another cell, right click and paste. So that's quite simple. We can copy and paste into cells. We can also cut. By right clicking we can go cut. You notice the information stays there. But we'll go to our other cell here and choose now paste. It's been moved to that location. We can also move text in cells by highlighting the information. So if we wish to move the text in this cell, take your cursor to the right. And when you have the four prongs appearing, and you, your cursor changes to an arrow. See the arrow there? Then you can just drag that information and move it to wherever you want. So we'll try that again. We'll change it to an arrow, click down with your left mouse, and you can move it wherever you want to on the worksheet. Here we go again. It's changed to a mouse. We'll move it in between. Now it's, we can do that with a block of text as well. When it changes to a mouse, we can move that whole block of text. Interestingly, what we didn't show you a minute ago is that you can also copy the text by holding or allowing the fill handle. When you come down to the corner of the text, you notice it changes to, it's only on the corner, right on the corner, it changes to what we call a fill handle left click down and pull across and now we've copied that text and if we go again we'll copy it again we can highlight all of the text and scroll right down and it will copy it all with that in mind let's have a look at how we can use this autofill here we have some dates and we can, we've got the 23rd and 24th. If we highlight both of these and use our autofill handle and go down, you'll notice our dates are changing and it's adding the dates in for us. Why is that? Well, automatically Microsoft will recognize because we had two dates there that we are counting one date and then the next consecutive date. It will work the same with numbers because dates are, in fact, numbers. So here we do it again, and again you'll notice that it changed. Now what I'm going to do is show you something here, a little, just a little trick. When we have one number, and we do that, it doesn't work. But what you can do with numbers is hold your control key down, get your fill handle, and now it will reference them as before and sequentially add those numbers. 
Now along with that, adding to that, in Microsoft Excel 2010, by default, there are four lists. One is the full day, one is the abbreviation for the day, one is the full month, and one is the abbreviation for the month. So if you click on the Monday and scroll down, you'll notice it's changing to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all the way down. And it's the same with Monday here. Why is that? Because there are lists. Now you can make your own lists, and we'll discuss that in another tutorial. And it's the same here with our months. But it's not the same for all text. If we type in the number one, for instance, and go to scroll down, because there is no list of one to 10 or one to 100, and you go and pull it down, you're just going to get the number one all the way down. So with numbers, it will recognize it automatically. And with days and months, you have lists in there. You can use the fill handle to add those extra dates and days. Now, before we close this tutorial or lesson, I'd like to show you the paste options. We'll click into the cell here that says drag and drop and we'll copy that cell by right clicking and then we're going to move down and choose paste. So we'll choose, we'll click in a cell here, we'll right click and we'll choose paste. You'll notice that the cell contents and formatting were copied to this location. You'll also notice that it is still copied to our clipboard because of the rotating border there. So we can right click again and choose this time paste and we can go over here and just paste the text. If there was formulas there we could just paste the formula. If there was links we could paste the link. And we can just paste formatting if you notice that. So we have all of these options and it gives us a visual display as we're doing it. The other thing that we can do is choose the Paste Special button underneath that. We're able to do many, many things. And what you'll find you'll need to do from time to time is just paste values, not pasting formats. So that's using the Paste functions. Take some time to get used to that. If you want to clear your clipboard, just hit the Escape key. In our next tutorial, we'll be looking more deeply at the formatting of the cells. How you can add colour, borders, styles and attributes to the cell to add more power to Microsoft Excel. Thank you for listening.